FinOps for Finance. This week I'm going to cover a new course that's been released by the FinOps Foundation. It's called the Introduction to Focus Certification. So first off, what is Focus? That is the FinOps Open Cost and Usage Specification. So at its basic element, that means consolidating data sources from cloud providers and SaaS providers into a consistent methodology. And this this video today is going to go through that course that gives you the base certification around this to demonstrate that you know what it is and the first steps in terms of getting started with it. I'm going to cover an overview of the course. I'll dive into one level of the course detail in terms of what's what it entails. I'll give an overview of the quiz and I'll recap and, and tell you um, potential next steps. So without further ado, first off the course itself, the main thing to note is this course is free. So it won't cost you anything to give it a go. I'll put the link to the course in the show notes so you can access it there and give it a crack. It will demonstrate the the fact that you've, you've kind of started looking at this and that you've, you're kind of looking to expand your FinOps knowledge and give you that wider appeal to potential employers. What the course does is it talks about what is focus, which is essentially the a consistent data set across the different cloud providers and SaaS providers. And that's what they're, they're trying to do. The course also covers the sample use cases, which is giving you some scenarios in which you would use the focus framework in which it is of significant value. It'll also give you some steps in terms of how to get the focus data set itself. So it's all well and good telling you about what this wonderful new thing is, but the course also gives you the actionable steps to start maybe transforming and blending your data to start using the the framework, which is which is really a good element of it. It also talks about next steps in terms of where you can take the information that you learn in the course and progress on your journey. So the course detail itself, the initial focus overview that it gives, it talks about the challenge that focus is trying to solve, which is the fact that you've got these massive data sets from different cloud providers and SaaS providers. And what you need to do is you need to make them normalize. So you need to have make them consistent across the piece so that you can compare them on an aggregated or combined level. So for example, if you look at the costs, the actual very basic element of a billing file, that cost could be blended, unblended, amortized, unamortized. So what Focus does is it tries to put guardrails in place that you're just looking at one single metric across the piece and it it tries to avoid the confusion that can happen if you're not comparing apples with apples the so it kind of re removes that that level of complexity and it also i suppose reduces overheads because instead of having to try and figure out these data sets across different cloud providers and different SaaS providers it gives you a framework within which you can build on. So you can effectively wrangle all your data so that it's sitting in a consistent manner using this framework. In terms of the adoption of the framework, you've got three people that this influences. One is the cloud providers. So the, the big three, um, so AWS, Azure, and GC all have native connectors where you can just pull in their data and it'll transform it into the focus um, framework um, specifications. Then you have FinOps vendors who they would be companies that provide observability. So you might have one of these providers that they hook into your billing information and they you can create pretty dashboards off the top of them. So they're being tasked with bring in these specifications as well so that you're seeing a consistent language across what the cloud provider, different cloud providers are telling you. You don't have to go into three separate consoles for three separate providers or SaaS providers as well. The third area of the adoption is the practitioners themselves. So that's that's you guys, whether you're working in it now or potentially hoping to work it in the future. It's 
the fact that you're aware of this, that you know that it's out there and you want to pull your data together in a unified manner because everyone will still provide you the information at the base level that they've always provided, but it's up to you to invest the time to structure your data in this consistent manner for future benefit and growth for the organization and for better decision making across your whole IT stack, not just one specific cloud provider. What I can also do as well is you can expand your scope of influence because if you start off just looking at maybe one cloud doing the FinOps for that and you bring in focus, maybe you can bring in some other cloud elements, but you can also look at the SaaS element and start working with the IT asset management team to try and drive reporting and observability all the time, making yourself more valuable, more valuable insights and deliver more value to the business overall, which can be no no bad thing. The course also goes through the focus data validator, which kind of talks about the, the rules that apply against the, the base data received to, to make it in that consistent format. So the course touches on, on what that involves. It also talks about converting the data into focus. So there's some scripts. Um, again, this is beyond my technical knowledge. I don't, I didn't, I looked at the link. Um, I can't write a script. I'm, I'm sure I could figure out how to run a script, but it effectively helps you combine those source data sets into the focus framework. So there's links to that documentation and how that works. So there might be a collaboration element there with someone else in the team to try and apply that, but you've got all the information in this base course. It also talks about the, the course, the overview talks about the, the meaning of focus. So like the better understanding of your cost and usage, the better ability to compare apples to apples as I spoke about before when you're looking at four different pilling cost metrics, trying to trying to combine those so you're consistent across the piece and that you've consistent terminology. Um, and this gives you that transferable skill that you can move from. We started with one cloud, we'll bring in another cloud into the focus framework. Maybe we'll bring in a SaaS provider and you're building up that footprint and that, I suppose, that central data hub that you can drive reporting and actions out of. The course also covers a use case library where they talk about some specific examples where focus is really valuable. One would be in budgeting, which I suppose is a lot of us might be from a finance or analytics background. Budgeting is, is kind of a cornerstone of, of all this and being able to, if, a, if you think about it from a business unit point of view, if they're using three clouds and two SaaS providers, they would have to carve up a budget an annual budget based on these different five streams of usage. If you're able to give them a combined view for their planning, budgeting, focus area, and then also be able to report on that on a consistent monthly basis, it's worth an awful lot. So instead of having to look at five different specific lines, they can look at one consolidated number. Is it up or down? If it's up or down, which of the areas is it up or down in? And you can drill down because you have that lower level of data below that in your single number. So it becomes a really powerful conversation. And you it allows kind of escalating to, to the higher levels of the org as well. And that's, I suppose, part of the reason why focus is so valuable, a thing to, I suppose, first off, get your head around and second, start to maybe apply to the business practices that you're using. It also talks about in terms of use case, probably the most, most powerful would be the allocating invoicing and chargeback. Because if you think about it, again, in that example of three cloud providers, maybe two SaaS providers, you have to do five different exercises to carve out that cost and split it across the business units. With focus, if you've got a combined data set, you can just do one centrally agreed allocation methodology, and then you just carve up that one combined number across the across the piece. Granted, now that sounds a lot easier than said, a lot easier said than done. But with a bit of with the buy-in from the executive team about pushing towards the central data piece, um, the the payback will be significant down the line. So you're just trying to establish the building blocks to be able to, to progress going going forward. 
the course also touches on the focus data. So it talks about some of the columns and attributes um, within within the library. So it talks about bill cost, which I touched on billing currency because different cloud providers provide you the base data. Some will have a local currency field and some will have a, a billing currency field. So it's trying to consolidate that and remove the noise again. It also has pricing category where you look at your price from an on-demand savings plans or ORI rate um, in a consistent manner again because each of the curves or billing files um, express that differently. So by being able to again have that consistent view makes a massive difference. And even stuff as simple as the date and time format because obviously if you're American date versus this side of the Atlantic date um, that funkiness can lead to all sorts of weird and wonderful um, things. But by having that, again, buttoned down into a unified view, uh, it allows for the trending over time and everything like that to be rock solid and, and consistent. The course also touches on next steps that can be taken. So in terms of it talks about the FinOps Certified Focus Analyst course, which is 400 bucks, which includes, which is not, not to be sneezed at, um, but it includes the source material or the, the, the training material as well as the exam. And if you pass the exam, you get a certification. Hands up, I have not done this course myself yet. I'm waiting on approval to come through. So hopefully next week I'll get that out of the way and then I'll create another video giving my take on what what it covers and if it's worth doing. Um, in terms of next steps, they also talk about the the steps that you can take to start generating or combining your data sets into the focus format. So giving some really actionable next steps to start looking under the hood and seeing, is this something we could take on? Maybe is there a piece of the organization that we could start to, to maybe migrate um, some of the data sets to, to this? So that that's quite quite good, the fact that you have some next steps off the back of it. Moving on to the quiz itself, it's 10 questions. All the questions are based on the material covered in the course. So if you do the course, take a couple of notes as you're going along to get an idea of what's involved, it should be no, no issue at all. Um, there's no pass-fail, so there's no negative marking or anything like that. Um, so you get as many attempts as you want. So if you get a question wrong, you can go back, change it, understand what, what you did the first time and, uh, and correct it and get your certification and post it up on LinkedIn or wherever it is to kind of expand your presence and show that you, you've kind of taken the time to learn a little bit around the focus framework. In terms of the the recap and the next step, so it's it's a no brainer really to to give this a crack. It's take about one to two hours max if you're really taking your time and looking at the documentation. And the the quiz at the end of it is is relatively straightforward. It it will align well if you've got the introduction to FinOps course, which is also free. Plus this, it shows that you're building that foundation of understanding. The biggest benefit of focus I, I see for the future is that expanded scope that your FinOps won't just be about the cloud providers and what you can do around rate optimization and usage optimization. It'll be about so much more. You'll get elements of that SaaS reporting. You'll be able to almost bring that analytics and finance view further to the fore because you'll have that combined data set. And by having that pipeline in place, you become a much more valuable member of the team in the organization and spending the time to build something meaningful like that central hub will pay dividends down the future. So it's definitely something worth giving a go. And that's all I had. Um, thanks so much for your time. If you have any questions, leave a note in the comments below. Like I say, I'm going to tackle the analyst course in the next week or so and I'll have another video talking about what that looks like. Chat to you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.